Hey, it's me, name Jenny Lee. I'm here with the next raw discussion video. We're on session 43, which makes this video number 44. Before we communicate, we may request the adjustment without the touching of the instrument's physical body complex of the item which presses upon the instrument's head. This is causing some interference with our contact. The pillow or something else? Do you speak of the pillow under the neck? There is a line of inf interference crossing the crown of the head. Is it, questioner finds, a two-fold, two-inch fold of the sheet three inches above the instrument's head and lays it flat. Is it that? Correct. Please increase the distance from the crown of the head. <laughs> Freaking sheet fold in the way. What? Okay, so then Don Ruffles in the sheet were smoothed all along the length of the sheet next to the instrument's head. Is this satisfactory? Yes. Okay, we communicate now. All right. I'll try to pick up the last question left over from the last session. I don't know if there's is of any of importance. But it occurred to me that the parts removed from the cat in the cattle mutilations are the same every time, and then just wondered if the this was related to the energy centers and why they were important, if that was so. So I remember last time Don was getting real deep into why we need emotions and should we really focus on our emotions and because he didn't know, you know, he didn't want to deal with his own emotions. Um, so then when stuff got too heavy, he just started asking about cattle mutilations. So here we go. <laughs> this is basically correct. If you may understand that there is a link between energy centers and various thought forms, thus the fears of the mass consciousness create the climate for this concentration upon the removal of the body parts, which symbolize areas of concern or fear in the mass consciousness. Are you saying that these parts are removed that are removed are related to the mass consciousness of the third density human form on the planet? And this fear is being used in some way by the second density entities, the thought form entities that do the mutilations. This is correct as laterly stated. The thought form entities feed upon fear. Thus, they are able to do precise damage according to systems of symbology. The other second density types of which you speak need the blood. Ooh, this is a good one for the Halloween season. <laughs> the other, these other second density types need the blood to remain in the physical. Do they come in and out of our physical density from one of the astral planes? These entities are creatures of the Orion group. They do not exist in astral planes, as do the thought forms, but wait within the Earth's surface. We may remind you, we, we remind you that this is our impression that this type of information is unimportant. I agree with you wholeheartedly, but I sometimes am at a loss before investigation into an area to know whether it is going to lead to a better understanding. This just seemed to be related somehow to the energy centers we were speaking of. I'm going to make a statement and have you comment on it. So before we move on here, let's pause a little bit and um, go into this thought form stuff. So Ross says there's a kind of thought form, which remember would be that we have created ourselves through our fear and we gave it power and it's become its own entity. Second density thought form entity that feeds on fear. Okay. And then they can remove the body parts of these animals because they symbolize certain things to us, which causes more fear because it feeds off of the fear. It needs the fear of the mass consciousness to continue to exist. Keep that in mind should you ever come across what you think is a second density uh, thought, negative thought form beastie. <laughs> 
they need your fear. They can't survive without it. So if you're not afraid of them, they're either going to disappear or they're not going to be in your part of your existence. They'll go find somewhere else to get their fear. Important thing to know. Now, it does say that there's a second type. The second type needs blood. And these are from the Orion group. And they live within the Earth's surface. Now, that's a little scary. <laughs> the thought form thing, like, you know, you know that you can control it by not being fearful of it. But what are these other things that need blood? Are they vampires? I don't know. They live in the Earth's surface, and they're from the Orion group. Probably still to give us fear, I'm sure, is the main outcome of that. Because fearful people will succumb to um, doing whatever they need to do to not be scared. And that's what the Orion group is trying to do, is control people. Boo. Let's move forward. Okay, now Dawn's next question is, when the creator's light is split or divided into colors and energy centers for experience, <clears throat> then in order to reunite with the creator, the energy centers must be balanced exactly the same as the split light as was, oh goodness, In order to reunite with the creator, the energy centers must be balanced exactly the same as the split light was as it originated from the creator, correct? To give this query a simple answer would be nearly impossible. We shall simply simplify by concentrating upon what we consider to be the central idea towards what you are striving. We have many times now spoken about the relative importance of balancing as opposed to the relative unimportance of maximal activation of each center, which are in these sessions, 29, 27, 44, and 41, 19. The reason is, as you have correctly surmised, thusly the entity is concerned if it be upon the path of positive harvestability with the regularizing of the various energy centers of experience. Thus, the most fragile entity may be more balanced than one with extreme energy and activation in service to others due to the fastidiousness with which the will is focused upon the use of experience and knowing the self. The densities upon your own give the minimally balanced individual much time, space, and space time with which to continue to refine these inner balances. There's a lot of information in that paragraph. Hmm. So it's not about how strong the energy centers are, it's about how balanced they are. All right, and the fourth density is the catalyst of physical pain used as a mechanism for experiential balancing. The use of physical pain is minimal, having only to do with the end of the fourth density incarnation. Really. The physical pain would not be considered severe enough to treat in the third density. <clears throat> the catalysts for mental and spiritual pain are used in the fourth density. Hooray. <laughs> oh, goodness. So we don't have to really worry about physical pain in the fourth density till the end for some reason. But, you know, still you're going to be mentally and spiritually anguished. Fantastic. Okay. What is physical what is physical pain as part of the end of the fourth density? Weariness. <laughs> Great. <laughs> you would call this variety of pain weariness. <clears throat> See all the wonderful things we have to look forward to? This shit never ends, man. It never ends. There's <laughs> just, We think when we end this life, we're going to go to this greater place where we're going to, I don't know, 
live in glory and peace and everlasting joy. Uh, no, 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 no. Mental, spiritual pain and weariness. Good God almighty. Okay. Can you even state the average lifespan in the fourth density of time-space incarnation? The time-space incarnation typical of harmonious fourth density is approximately 90,000 of your years. <sighs> oh, God. <clears throat> now remember, time doesn't really exist the same as it does here, if time even exists at all. But what? 90,000 years? Are you... <sighs> Okay, are there multiple incarnations in the fourth density with time-space experiences between incarnations? Afterlife or between lives? What? Correct. <laughs> are there multiple incarnations in the fourth density with time-space experiences between incarnations? What are we saying here? Okay, so it's been a while since I've read this session. When you first read the sentence that a lifespan lasts approximately 90,000 years in the fourth density, it makes it seem like 90,000 years is the, is the span of fourth density. Right? Like, it takes approximately 90,000 years to get through the fourth density and move up to the fifth. No, no. No. That is not what they're saying. They're saying that you have a life span in the fourth density. Is your brain hurting yet? Because I know mine is. The wheels are, are, are trying to turn, but there's some gunk in the way because this doesn't make any sense. <sighs> Let's keep reading. How long is a cycle of experience in the fourth density in our years? The cycle of experience is approximately 30 million of your years if the entities are not capable of being harvested sooner. <coughs> there is in this density of harvest, which is completely the function of the readiness of the social memory complex. It is not structured as you, is your own for the deals for it deals with a more transparent distortion of the one infinite creator. So somehow, some way <clears throat> in fourth density, which I think they've said this before, there's some kind of physical body not like this thing, something that's a little different, some sort of different energy wise, right? And that physical body can last for 90,000 years. And then you would get another one. But the actual experience of the fourth density typically lasts 30 million years here's the question I want to know let's google it <clears throat> how long do we think the gal like the whole universe has been around so when did the universe begin 13.8 billion years ago is our best guesstimate. Okay. Let's use a calculator here. <laughs> if I even know how many zeros are in a billion. Okay. 13.8 billion. I'm adding zeros. That's a million. That's 13 million. That's 138 million. 
that's 1 billion, oh no, 13 billion. Okay, we gotta add some more zeros here. 13 billion 800 million years ago, divided by 30 million. Okay, that's 3,000, that's 30,000, that's 300,000, that's 3, 3 million, that's 30 million. So from what we know of the lifespan of the universe, which like looking through the lens of the raw material, that would be when the energy that is all, the creator, the one, decided to expand and start splitting off into the logos and sublogos was 13.8 billion years ago, according to what we mere, meager, not very smart humans know. <clears throat> and if it takes 30 million years to get through a fourth density for any group of entities, there's a, been a chance for 460 of those to happen. That's how many times 30, that's how many 30 million years fit into 13.8 billion, 460. So really, so really, you know, you wouldn't have got, no one would have gotten through the first 30 million years in a fourth density because they had to go through all the other densities first. So let's just say, the the maximum amount of times that any entities could have gone through the fourth density is 459 times. There's the potential for 459 fourth densities. That's really not all that many. If you put that all into account. Because that's just getting through the fourth density. There's still the fifth and the sixth and the seventh to get back to the creator. So I guess <clears throat> when we look at it through the lens of our tiny little itty bitty a bit of a lifespan as a human, it seems like a ridiculously long amount of time. But when you look at it through the lens of the existence of the universe, it's really not that many. It's not that much. And I guess that's why it takes so damn long. <laughs> if the goal that was made at the start of the universe was for everything to eventually make it back to the creator so that that energy could experience every possible thing that it could possibly experience, then really it's not that long. What do you guys think? <laughs> I feel like that put it, doing the math put it a little bit more into perspective for me because before I was like, God, what the heck and heck? Okay, let's keep going. All right. <clears throat> Then the big difference of harvestability in third and fourth density is that at the end of the third density, the individual is harvested as a function of individual violet ray, but in fourth density, it is the equivalent of the violet ray then for the entire social memory complex. It must be a harvestable nature to go to the fifth density, question mark. This is correct. Although in fifth density, entities may choose to learn as a social memory complex or as mind-body-spirit complexes and may graduate to sixth density under these conditions for the wisdom density is an entirely free density whereas the lessons of compassion leading to wisdom necessarily have to do with other selves. So I feel like this is making a little more sense to me too because this whole time that we've been reading this book I feel like the social memory complex was a bit confusing to me because as a very individual, independent person, 
the idea of like melding together with all of the humans to be this social memory complex was a little bit um, discouraging to me. <laughs> Like, I don't want to lose my individuality, but it doesn't seem like that's what happens. You don't lose your individuality. You just come together to work together because the fourth density is about love, which has to deal with other selves. <clears throat> so in order to get through that density, you have to be able to work with others. And that's why the social memory complex is formed. Then the fifth density you can choose do you want to keep working with everybody else or do you want to do it by yourself? This is good to know. Good to know. Then is six density harvest strictly of social memory complexes? Because again, we have compassion blended back using wisdom. I wrote, huh? But I understand that now. So Dawn's thinking that in the sixth density, you do have to come back to the social memory complex because the sixth density is love and wisdom together. And that's right. Ra says that's quite correct. So individual for first, second, third, fourth together. Fifth could be either one. Six go back together. We know that the physical vehicle in fourth density we know that the physical vehicle in fourth density that is used during space-time, I'm assuming, is quite similar to the one we have now in the third density, correct? The chemical elements used are not the same. However, the appearance is similar. There you go. So talking about <clears throat> what kind of bodies do people have in the fourth density, they look similar to what we look like in the third density but they don't use the chemical elements that we have of our various planets. Is it necessary, it's necessary to eat food in the fourth density? Correct. Look at my little face there. <laughs> we have to eat food in the fourth density? The mechanism of social catalyst due to the necessity for feeding the body then is active in fourth density, correct? Incorrect. Fourth density being desires to serve and the preparation of foodstuffs is extremely simple due to increased communication between the entity and living foodstuff. Therefore, this is not a significant catalyst, but rather a simple precondition of the space-time experience. The catalyst involved is the necessity for the ingestion of foodstuffs. <clears throat> this is not considered to be of importance by fourth density entities and it therefore aids in the teach learning of patience. So what is exactly is it saying here? So they can make things. It sounds like they can make food without having to actually make it. They just like tell it to make itself. <laughs> the communion between the entity and the living food stuff. Hey there, broccoli, jump in my mouth. I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. <clears throat> okay. So it's not a significant catalyst, but a precondition of the space-time experience. So we're not using it to really learn anything like we would in the third density where not having enough food is a catalyst, having too much food is a catalyst, and sharing food together is a catalyst. It's not like that in the fourth density. <laughs> The catalyst involved is the necessity for the ingestion of foodstuffs. So it's necessary that fourth density entities eat food to survive, just like us. But it's not to be, it's not considered to be an importance of the fourth density, but aids in the teach learning of patience. I'm not really sure how patience fits into all of that. But um, okay. <clears throat> well kind of favorite fourth density food is yours? <laughs> we don't know yet because we haven't got there. I wonder what they eat there though. Do they eat the same kind of stuff we eat or do they have some crazy weird stuff we've never heard of before? <laughs> Could you expand on how this aids in the teach learning of patience? Oh good, Dawn was asking the same thing. 
To stop the functioning of service to others long enough to ingest foodstuffs is to invoke patience. There we go. Okay, so fourth density <clears throat> positives are going to be trying to serve others so much for such a long amount of time that we have to, they have to stop and eat. Don't forget to stop and eat. We do that as the third density sometimes too. I'm guessing that it is not necessary to ingest food in the fifth density, correct? Incorrect. Fifth density has to eat too. However, the vehicle needs food which, is, may, which may be prepared by thought. So they can <clears throat> think their food into existence. I would like to think a bowl of Rocky Road ice cream into existence right now. <laughs> so fourth density can talk to the food and tell it to make itself. Fifth density can just make it with their thoughts. What type of food would this be? You would call this type of food nectar or ambrosia or a light broth of golden white hue. So fifth densities are like eating some sort of liquid. Sounds sugary. <laughs> what is the purpose of ingesting food in the fifth density? This is a somewhat central point. The purpose of space-time is to is the increase of catalytic action appropriate to the density. One of the preconditions of space-time existence is some form of body complex. Such a body complex must be fueled in some way. There you go. So if it has a body, it has to be fueled. In the third density, the fueling of our bodily complex not only simply fuels the complex, but gives us opportunities to learn service. In fourth density, it not only fuels the complex, but gives us the opportunity to learn patience. In the fifth density, it fuels the complex, but it does it teach. In fifth density, it is comfort for those of like mind gather together to share in this broth, thus becoming one in light and wisdom while joining hearts and hands in physical activity. Thus, in this density, it becomes a solace rather than a catalyst for learning. Well, that sounds lovely. Thank goodness there's something that sounds lovely. I'm simply trying to trace the evolution of this catalyst then, that, that then changes in fifth density. I might as well ask if there is any ingestion of food stuff in the sixth density. <clears throat> Correct. However, the nature of this food is that of light, and it is impossible to describe to you in, in any meaningful way as regards to the thrust of your query. So even in the sixth density, there's food, but it's made of light somehow. In fourth density on this planet, after we're totally transitioned and the harvest is complete, fourth density beings will incarnate on the surface of this planet as we know it now. Is that correct? The probability possibility for vortices indicate this to be most likely. Then will there be, at that time, any fifth density or sixth density beings on the surface of the planet? <clears throat> Not for a fairly long measure of your time, as fourth density beings need to spend their t learn, teach, space time with their own density entities. Okay. So most likely, if we get to fourth density, we're still going to be part, we're still going to be on planet Earth. And then we're not necessarily going to have fifth or sixth densities here with us as wanderers anymore because fourth density has to all be together. Makes sense. Then basically, teachings of fifth and sixth density beings would not be too well understood by the fourth density, new fourth density entities. Do you wish to query upon this point? <laughs> Other words, was that a question? I guess I didn't state that correctly. Is it true that the fourth density, new density, fourth density, goodness gracious, Don. Okay. <clears throat> Is it true that the new fourth density beings that need to evolve in their thinking to reach a point where fifth density lessons must be of value? Okay, they, gra they grasp the thrust of the query here, though. There we go. Although it is true that as fourth density beings progress, they have more and more need for other density teachings, it is also true that just as we speak to you due to the calling, so the information called is always available. 
It is simply that fifth density beings will not live upon the surface of the planetary sphere until the planet reaches fifth density vibratory level. Hmm. Because the planet has to get to a fifth density level. All right. I was wondering if the mechanism of the learn teach learning was the same in fourth density. From what you say, it seems that necessity for the for first the call to exist for the teach learning of fifth density to be given to fourth, just as a call must exist here before fourth density lessons are given to third, correct? This query is misguided, for experience in fourth density is empathetically not the same as third density experience. However, it is correct that the same mechanism of calling predisposes the information received in a way of con in a way con consonant with free will. So fourth density is just so different. So it doesn't it doesn't quite work the same, I guess. All right. You stated that the key to strengthening the will is concentration. Can you tell me the relative importance of following aids and concentration? I have listed silence, temperature control, comfort of body, screening as a fair a Faraday cage would screen electromagnetic radiation, visible light screening, and a constant smell such as the use of incense for strengthening your concentration and meditation. In other words, an isolation type of situation. You mentioned that this was one of the functions of the pyramid. The analogies of body complex to mind and spirit complex what? Okay, the analogies of body complex to mind and spirit complex activities have been discussed previously in sessions 40, 40, 4, 14, and 41, 21, 22. You may consider all these aforementioned aids as those helpful to the stimulation of that which aids concentration. <clears throat> that being the will of the entity. This free will may be focused at any object or goal. So to me, it kind of sounds like it depends on the individual person, what they specifically need to get to the concentration. And each person would probably need a, something different. Okay, I was really trying to get at whether it would be a great of them of great importance to construct a better place for our meditations. We have distractions here of the types which I mentioned, and I know that it is our total free will as to whether we construct this or not, but I was just trying to get to the at these principles. For instance, the Faraday cage would be quite a big construction. I was wondering if it would be of any real value. Without infringing upon your free will, we feel it possible to state that the Faraday cage and the isolation tanks are gadgets. The surrounding of self in a civilian atmosphere apart from distractions in a place of working used for no other purpose in which you and your associates agree to lay aside all goals but that of the meditative seeking of the infinite creator is not gadgetry but the making use of the creation of the father in the second density love and in the love of the and the support of other selves So any of those things that Don was asking or suggesting would just be tools to get to where they wanted to be and what they wanted to do. <clears throat> but it's not necessary because really it's the intention. And different people might need different levels of isolation to have less distractions. For example, when I do my Friday night streams on Twitch, there can be many distractions <laughs> sometimes there's people walking upstairs sometimes the dog is making a bunch of noise up there sometimes my kids too loud sometimes the crickets are loud sometimes it's raining really hard like there can be a lot of distractions and some days the distractions don't bother me and I can totally tune them out and everything's great. And some days I only hone in on those noises and I can't get out of them and it takes me longer to get focused. <clears throat> so I think it just depends on the individual person and probably even the individual day and like what's been going on that day for that person. 
at the very beginning of the session, they're having problems because there's a part of a sheet that's like in the way of Carla's head. <laughs> so there you go. Once again, this session went in in total full circle there. Uh, for Carla, there cannot be any sheet in the way. And she has to have a lot of things precisely placed above her head. And they have to do meditation. And apparently she has to have sex with Jim before. And, uh, you know, all these things. But that's just for Carla and Don and Jim. Every person's going to be different. So I think that would be a trial and error of figuring out what's best for you to get to your level of concentration to try to connect with every anything or everything. <laughs> All right, this is a really interesting session. So let's review what we learned today. Okay, <clears throat> don't let sheets be in the way of Carla's head. Very important. All right, um, thought forms created by mass consciousness and thought forms from Orion density can be super scary and eat people, not people, eat animals <laughs> and apparently drink blood. It's almost Halloween. So, you know, good stuff. Um, all right. Then we learned about, um, it's more important to balance your chakra energies than it is to for them to be highly active. We learned that there's still a lot of pain as we go through the densities, physical, mental, and spiritual. Woo, things to look forward to. We also learned um, some more about the light that, um, oh, this, this was very interesting and important, that the densities... Uh, particularly the fourth density has lifespans about 90,000 years and it takes roughly 30 million years to get through the fourth density and then um, fourth densities together fifth can be separate or together six densities back together there are physical bodies in the fourth density but they're different than what ours are you gotta keep eating <laughs> don't forget to eat in the fourth fifth and sixth density but all the foods are different i'm looking forward to that what kinds of foods do we get all right and then we talked about um that will still be part of the planet through fourth density, but we'll kind of, we'll lose our wanderers if we ever even make it to the fourth density. Let's be honest. Um, okay, and then and then and then concentration which we just summed up at the end there. So that has been session 43. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. If this is the first video of the raw con content that you've come across, you should probably go watch them in order. And um, please comment, discuss questions, comments, complaints. What do you guys think about all this? We're getting really close to being done with this first volume. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.